Let me begin by saying that reading Miketz when 137 Israelis are still held hostage in Gaza is a turbulent and powerful experience. It enables us to experience in the flesh the existential insecurity that this portion is all about. This portion begins with Pharaoh's dream about the seven fat and abundant cows that are eaten alive by the seven meager ones. And the same scenario repeats with seven ears of grain that are becoming thinner and thinner. Pharaoh doesn't know how to interpret this dream. And then Joseph, someone who knows existential insecurity by heart, comes to save him from that. Joseph is by now 30 years old. And since his childhood, he has been living as a slave in Egypt. When he interprets his dream by saying that now it's the time for Egypt to start packing up food in order to escape the hunger that will come in seven years, he actually saves the entire area from hunger and impoverishment. He still doesn't know that this is how he is going to enter into the heart of his own story, his own personal and family trauma of being sold to slavery as a child. In chapter 42, we hear about Jacob and his, and his 11 children, um, Joseph's 11 siblings left behind that are beginning to, to experience this horrible famine. And Jacob tells his 10 sons to go down to Egypt and to get food from there because he heard there is still food in Egypt. There is one thing that Jacob doesn't want to do, that is to send um, Joseph's sibling, his brother um, from Rachel um, with the 10 brothers to um, Egypt. He says, I'm reading from uh, Robert Alter's wonderful translation of the Bible. My son will not go down with you for his brother is dead and he alone remains and should harm befall him on the way you are going, you would bring down my gray head in sorrow to Sheol. This is how Jacob experiences the fear of being left behind and experiencing this horrible trauma in the flesh. He doesn't want this thing to happen again to him. But what happens next is a very different scenario. When the brothers come back to Egypt, Joseph recognizes them. He sees them. And even though what he does to them seems like a very abusive and torturous um, experiment, this is how he begins the correction that will um, eventually um, bring him back to his family and bring him back to his father, Jacob. We don't have enough time to go into the very details of what happens there, but let me just tell you that Joseph doesn't allow his siblings not to bring Benjamin back. He needs for his own heart's correction to see that they learned the lesson, that they will never do to his brother Benjamin what they did to him. And so he asks his brothers to go back home and bring Benjamin back. And then I want to notice what happens to Jacob. The first thing that happens to him is that the literary um, writer, um, the, the biblical uh, author, changes his name to Israel. Of course, he received that name already, but then in chapter 43, he says um, Israel sends Benjamin, not without pain and worry, but he also sends all the gifts that he has. He sends honey and almond and everything to Egypt doing so, he surpasses the trauma he experienced in the flesh and wants to rise to the challenge of faith. Maybe the future will be different from what happened to him in the past. Now this Torah portion ends on a very pessimistic note at the heart of darkness when um, Joseph in his experiment uh, puts a a silver cup in Benjamin's uh, sack and blames him for being a thief and wants him to remain as a slave in Egypt. 
we still don't know when this portion ends, that this very moment is when Joseph will reclaim his trust in his family and will reclaim his trust in his brothers that will say, we will not do this to our father again. We still experience to this day what happened to our dead brother that they don't know. He is the one speaking to them at this time. But I want to end on this note that Jacob is named Israel at the moment when he says, I will put my past behind everything that let me down and I will now rise to the idea of having a faith about the future that is going to be different from everything I already experienced. And with this faith and heart, I want us to continue and look into the crisis of faith and crisis of trust we had in our family, in the family of Israel among our brothers and sisters who have been through horrid polarization in the past few years and especially in the past few months. May our hope for a different future and for the return of our loved ones surpass all the pain we have experienced in the flesh. And let us hope that this is what will turn us into Israel at this time. Happy Hanukkah, everyone.